I'm Aaron Hunter with Engine Pro. I'm here today with Dan Begley from King Engine Bearings, and we're going to talk about all the different bearing types, how they work, their groove technology, and all of the deep studies that Dan's been doing for 25 years, 30 years? And then some. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dan, tell me about the different types of engine bearings you've got here. So, typically, most manufacturers, there's different types. There's aluminum bearings, which is a bimetal. And basically what that is, it's a, it's a bearing where you have a steel and you have aluminum over top of it. Uh, it's it's a inex more of an inexpensive bearing to make. Uh, then there's a trimetal bearing, which is a three parts of steel. There's a bronze substrate, and then there's a plating over top that is the wear surface that you would use. On Sounds like a strong bearing. It is. So in typically applications, uh, your higher horsepower engines would use a trimetal bearing okay. because it is stronger. The, the bronze allows movement and the plating is the wear resistance on it to, to keep everything working perfectly like it's supposed to. So. Okay. Now what about that aluminum bearing? Where, when are we going to be using those guys? So, so typically this is aluminum bearing uh -huh. and a lot of the OEMs use aluminum bearing because it's, again, it's inexpensive. Uh, they don't make a lot of power. Once they start, some of these high-end cars, that uh, exotic cars or even some of the, like the Dodge Demon or something like that, can't use aluminum bearing. Okay. Because it basically will just pound out because aluminum's soft. Sure. So as, it, as it's, the, the engine's running and there's harmonics going on with the crankshaft, it would just move the aluminum out of the way, open up oil clearances, and that doesn't work too well. So, so oh, coming yeah. back for a higher horsepower, we come back to the tri-metal that's right. got steel laid in there. Right. So then you have the tri-metal bearing. So there's three layers, the steel, there's a bronze substrate, mm -hmm. and the bronze has lead in there. So okay. lead allows movement. Interesting. With the bronze for structure support, lead's a shock absorber per se, Sure. as you have impacts of going on with the bearing of load. It may not be journal contact. Mm -hmm. It can actually be because of the pressure film, which we're gonna talk about, uh, the amount of pressure, it will cycle. Okay. And when you get a lot of pressure, fluid pressure, it causes a disturbance in the, in the bearing itself. Interesting, okay. So bearings, we always think of ball bearings, uh, roller needle bearings, those guys are actually making constant contact. They're always moving around. Uh, uh, the film is in there, the oil film is in there for lubricity and cooling. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Here in an engine bearing though, we've got a flat bearing uh, that gets a film on it. Is that bearing supposed to be touching the journal at all yeah. times? Is it is it yeah. like a roller bearing that it's going we to? We want no contact, Okay. no contact. So, <laughs> so basically, here was, you know, we have a main bearing here. We have two main bearings and there's a groove in this upper mm -hmm. and typically speaking unless you have a um, certain engines have grooves always around uh, but the groove is goes up and there's an oil hole in there yep. so the oil hole will feed oil pressure from what the engine has so let's say the engine has 70 pounds of oil pressure all right so you have 70 pounds of oil pressure coming in here so when you put your bearing together it's in the block sure Clamp down, Yep. you have 70 pounds coming in here. Now, you set oil clearance up on a vertical, mm -hmm. and the amount of oil coming in here will fill up this space. Sure. So as the crankshaft turns, is taking this 70 pounds of oil pressure that's filled this cavity, per se, the clearance, yeah. and it will generate by pulling the oil to a very small surface, because as an engine fires, the cylinders push the crankshaft We're down. Pushing down in the main caps. Onto the main caps. So the crank's down. As it turns, it's taking this much volume of oil and trying to put it in a smaller space. It's like it's swedging it out. Exactly. So if you take um, like a door wedge, yep. some, keep the door closed, you push it under the door, it's putting pressure up mm -hmm. to lift the door to keep it from closing. Same thing, as this crankshaft turns, you're taking this space, this volume, and put it in a smaller space. Now we know liquids can't compress. Sure. So the 70 pounds coming in here can generate in certain applications 15,000 psi of film pressure. Oh my gosh. Here. Wow. So that's why the the oil clearance is very important on what oil you use because oil clearance oil is to get oil pressure is resistance to flow. Sure. Okay. So the thinner the oil it will want to bleed out the side. Okay. Okay, so if it bleeds out the side, you can't get the film pressure here. Correct. So if you can't get the film pressure here, then you have contact of the journal 
to the bearing, right. and it's not going to be a happy bearing. Okay, so that goes back to also we need to check our, our tolerances, um, our clearances before we set up the motor or as we're setting up the motor, and also determining what kind of oil we're wanting to use. But I see you've got two different groups grooves here. This one's going yep. all the way around. This one is uh, what? We call this about one one sixty. Okay. 160 degrees. Oh, you're exactly right. So this one will now, the oil coming in here will feed, you'll see this one has two particular holes and a lot of that's based off of phasing of the oil because the crankshaft has a hole sure. and it feeds the rod bearing. Yeah. So the time that you're feeding this is relative to the amount of holes and that can actually go into how much air is in the crankshaft to feed the rod bearings. Okay. So. I've did studies where we have 70% of air in the crankshaft to 17% of air based off of this groove and the location and size of those holes. Wow. So wow. it's very critical. So people that make changes and so forth like that, um, some of it can be good, some can be bad because there's a lot of engineering that goes in that groove. But this particular groove is designed so it feeds 160 degrees. Mm -hmm. This is a thrust bearing. So this particular thrust bearing is 180 degrees, degrees. Now, years ago, there used to be 360 degree grooves. And that's when we ran like 20W50 oil. Okay. All right. So 20W50 oil is very thick and you, it takes a long time to feed it. Newer engines run five weight oil. Yeah. All right. So the resistance to flow is much greater. So the 360 degree if you run that with 5W30 oil, that's you get no film pressure. Sure. Okay, so that's why a lot of the, the engines are starting to have smaller patterns of the degrees that they're, versus the conventional 360 degree groove. We're talking that from the crankshaft to the bearing microns mm. of film thickness. And once it, once it heats, it grows, and you get frictional temperature, and then it just snowballs into an engine failure. So when you get frictional temperature, because you don't have oil film mm -hmm. between the journal and the bearing, you start getting frictional temperature and it starts to melt the components. 